Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna be dedicating some time to go over the Interactive Brokers R package and how to use it. In this particular video, I'm gonna be showing you how to retrieve historical data from futures, stocks, and options. Now I did need to subscribe to some market data, otherwise I wasn't able to retrieve anything. So let's require some packages. I'm gonna run these three functions which I'll go over in a bit, but let me just run them so you can see the type of output and what to expect. Let's start off by requiring some futures data for the YM. The bar size is five minutes spanning over one week. Let's go ahead and run this line. So I'll in the console, you'll get a printout like this. Once it's done running, you'll see the futures data out in your environment. So if we minimize this, we go to futures data. We now have one week's worth of futures data in five minute intervals, and we get the open, high, low, close, the volume, the weighted average price, whether the data has gaps, and the trade count. Since this does return an XTS object, we can use quant mod to plot the series. Let's take a look at the plot. It did retrieve one week's worth of five minute intervals. And for futures, I have this coded to retrieve the front month. But if you need to retrieve something other than the front month, I'll show you where to change it. Now for stock data, we use the same parameters. So we use the ticker, the bar size, and the span. So I'm trying to retrieve Google one hour bars spanning for a month. Let's go ahead and run this block. We'll take a look at the stock data. So we have hourly intervals spanning back to one month. And we also get the open, high, low, close volume, the weighted average price, whether the data has gaps and the trade count. Let's close this out and take a look at the plot. And for historical data, we also get the option to pick whether or not it should return after hours data. Now, lastly, let's take a look at historical options data. Now for the parameters, we have to insert the ticker or the underlying symbol, the expiration, the strike, whether you want a call or the put, the bar size and the span. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at the data. Now for options data, we also get the open, high, low, close, the volume, the weighted average price, whether the data has gaps and the trade count. And by looking at the timestamps, we see that these are 15 minute intervals. And since this gets returned as an XTS object, we can also plot it. So if you take a look at the plot here, we see that these are spaced in 15 minute intervals, all for the current day. Now let's take a look at each individual wrapper in case you wanna modify anything. So let me close this out. I'm gonna start off by going over the futures data function. Let's open this up. Now we do need some configuration specifically what port number we're using to connect to the trader workstation. So I have mine set up to 7497, which in most cases, this will be the port number, but you can double check if you're not retrieving anything by going to global configuration and API. Now for the futures, we start off by building a contract. So we have an empty contract and we're gonna fill in the symbol, the currency and the type. So the ticker we pass in, the currency will be in USD and the type will be FUT for futures. We pass that contract into to require contract details. Here you will find all the futures contracts that end up matching this case. And in most cases, you will find the front month is usually the first contract it will retrieve within this list, along with all other contracts that you can trade on interactive brokers. So let's go over an example to show you what I mean. I'm gonna assign my ticker. We'll do the ES. I'll run this block. We'll take a look at contract. Now here we have a list of 24 items, and if we click on the very first one, all of these should be EBNE S&P. Now within the contract list, we have more details. So we have the contract ID and the expiration, which is what I'll be focusing on. So back in our script here, I'm gonna go inside the list, search for contract and retrieve the expiration. After I retrieve the expirations for all of the contracts, I'm gonna search for the front month by using which min and turning my expirations into dates. So it'll automatically pick the date closest to today. We'll pass that in to our contract to retrieve our front month. We will then build the security by using TWS futures. We pass in the contract symbol, the contract exchange, and the contract expiry. Once we have our security, we can require historical data by passing in our connection, our security, what to show is trades, the bar size, which we pass in, the span or duration. Here we can select whether or not we want to use regular trading hours only. And I'm gonna pass in the time zone. After we get historical data, I'm gonna disconnect and return the data. Now for stock data, this one's relatively straightforward. We open this up. We need to establish a connection. We need to build a TWS stock contract by passing in the ticker, the exchange, 
the primary exchange and the currency. Once we build our security, we're going to pass that into require historical data. We're going to pass in our connection, the security, what to show, the bar size, the duration, whether or not we want to use regular trading hours and the time zone. And again, once we get our historical data, I'm going to disconnect and return the data. Now for the options data, similar to our futures data, we need to require contract details. We establish a connection with our trader workstation. We build an empty TWS contract. We pass in the ticker, the currency, the security type, which will be options, the expiration, the strike, the exchange, and the write, whether this is a call or a put. Once we build our TWS contract, we're going to use required contract details and select the very first contract. Since we were very specific with the expiration, the strike, and the flag, you will only see one contract available. But if you leave something blank, say the flag, it will retrieve all the strikes that match the one you pass in for the expiration that you pass in. So in other words, you will get a call and a put. If you leave out the expiration, but only pass in the strike, then you will get all expirations matching that strike. So you'll have more variety. But since we were very specific, this will only return one contract. And from that contract, what we need to extract is the ID. And so we build a TWS option by passing in that ID, the expiration, the strike, the right, the exchange, the currency, the underlying symbol, and the multiplier. Once we have our security, we pass that into require historical data. And again, using the same parameters, we then disconnect and return the data. So that's how you get historical data for futures, stocks, and options. And with that, guys, this concludes the video. Like I said, I'll be creating a series going into detail on what you can do with this package. In my next video, I plan to show how to retrieve real-time bars. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.